What's up, YouTube? It's DV, and I'm back in Roblox Islands. Today is not an update day, but apparently we're going to be getting an update tomorrow. So if you're wondering where the update is, well, wait until tomorrow because they've got new stuff coming. So in this video, I will be giving you 15 tips that will actually help you in the game. So if you are new to Islands or even if you're an existing player and maybe you, you haven't really been watching all my videos, hopefully some of these tips will help. You know, if you're an experienced player, you may know these already. No big deal if you do. Awesome to you, especially if you watch some of my older videos, you've probably seen some of these already. So before I Again, please hit that like button and smash the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. So let's go and hop in. So the first tip I have is for general combat, okay? For general combat, this is the best weapon. I'm gonna show you, this is it. This is the best, currently as of this video, this is the best weapon in the game. It's pretty much like a spell book or even a title in some ways, but it doesn't have the AOE effect that the title has. It's more like the spell book, but it has the same damage as title. So let's go out here and I'm gonna show you how this thing works. So how you make this is, is from rubies, but you see here, I've got these slimes right they're kind of just jumping around if i take damage from these see i just took some damage so my health bar is down here see i'm at 268 two and so what i can do is i can actually shoot these and you're gonna see I, I just got fully healed right so you never run out of health so if i go over here and try to beat this boss i'm not gonna have any issues where i have to go and leave the battlefield now if you're using any other weapons you would have to use food you'd actually have to eat something to heal yourself so and that really slows things down because you're sitting there taking time away from being able to actually like you know battle so this entire time I can just keep grinding. I can go to the next mob, next mob, next mob. You see right here, he's attacking me, but I'm healing myself, right? I'm not taking any damage. I mean, I'm taking damage, but I'm not dying. Look, I'm still 288 out of 288. Pretty crazy, right? So again, get a Ruby staff as soon as you can, if you can. Now, instead of actually grinding for this, I'd highly advise go just buy it. Just go buy it off one of these islands. You can go to explore and just buy it from one of these players. Now it is not cheap, okay? So you're still gonna be paying a pretty penny for this thing. Now prices do change often. So, you know, this is still gonna be an expensive weapon. You're probably gonna need at least a million maybe 2 million depending on where you're buying. So keep an eye on prices if you are going to buy this weapon. So again, buying from shops, this is tip number two. Buying from shops is definitely the easiest way to get whatever you need in the game. Not only this weapon, but anything. If you need wood, if you need anything in the game, shopping is the best way to go. But the thing is, is you're going to be like, DV, here, here's the thing. I don't have any coins. We're going to get to that in a minute. Definitely grinding is the easiest way to get coins early on, especially if you haven't really been playing the game much. You're going to need to grind for that money. So you can actually get millions and millions of coins very quickly in this game it just does take a little bit of time at first you do need to gear up you do need to have some crops you need to have a couple things before you can start making millions so to be able to actually just buy whatever you want you do need some items but take advantage of you know those updates where you know it's like trophies like this patrick trophy was a great opportunity take advantage of any of the crops and stuff that go on your island we're going to cover a bit about how to make lots of coins but if you're just trying to do a little bit of, you know a few things that is the best way to go now for getting combat levels so obviously i'm here this does not require any combat levels this island over here does not require any combat levels you know spirit island but as soon as you go over to this portal it's going to tell you you need combat levels so how do you get combat levels fast you know obviously you're going to need to kill these but if you want to be able to get a lot of combat levels the best way to go honestly you know granted you're going to have to still access it is wizard island wizard islands mobs are the best way to level up so if you're trying to get to like diamond mines if you're trying to get a desert island anything that is in the future even wizards are currently the best way to go you can even afk these especially if you have a ruby staff you don't need a ruby staff to beat these you can use a sword the nice thing about ruby staff and especially my magic xp is i can one shot these so watch this if i go up to this guy boom he's gone and he's gone now that's because my magic level is obviously leveled up pretty high and you know i've got this really great weapon i'm doing 187 damage right now and so they're one shot now they are pretty low health you know so wizards do have low health they give you pretty good xp too so you can see when i kill these they give you a lot of xp so i'm getting 198 combat xp and i'm getting magic xp from them but um if you were to go obviously to desert island and kill scorps they give you more xp but they also take a lot more hits they're a lot more health you know so that means you're going to be spending a lot more time for each kill. Whereas I could kill like two of these guys and the time it would take for me to, you know, actually kill one Scorp. Now, of course, you don't have any other choice but to go in linear fashion. If you if you don't have access to this island yet, you're still going to have to go and kill, you know, the typical slimes. So again, there's no shortcut to this island. You do have to go and kill slimes and buff core to get here. But as soon as you do, just stay here. Don't go on to desert as soon as you unlock it. Just keep killing these until you get diamond mines unlocked. So speaking of combat, since we're still on that topic, this is my next tip for you is surrounding how to level up different types 
types of you know weapon skills so if we got light melee heavy melee archery and magic you can see my archery is pretty low it's only 47 my he my heavy is pretty low as well but my melee and magic are really high so say i want to actually like you know maybe level up my light melee because i have a sword here you can do this for um hammers you can do it for anything go and fight a boss so i'm going to summon this guy real quick and what you're going to do is you're going to actually get him down pretty low okay so you're going to go one so you're pretty much going to keep attacking him for a while so you're going to get him pretty low just hard with this weapon and then you're going to finish him off with whatever weapon you want to level up so you see i just got 5,000 light melee almost 5,000. that is how you do it so you pretty much take him down with whatever weapon you have a ton of damage on and then you're going to finish him off with a different weapon so you could do that with bows you could do that with hammers you could do all that with anything real simple great way to level up other skills without really having you know to like kill everything with those weapons just do that with the bosses um core is actually a great one to do because core is actually giving you like almost 10,000. i think he gives you like 10,000 xp so next tip is how do you get a lot of economy xp so obviously we're talking about you know going to shops and such but you're gonna like db i don't have economy xp how do i level it up fast what i do honestly wheat farms just wheat farms i mean that that is the best way to go great thing about wheat you can actually afford it really cheap so you can go over to this guy cletus you know wheat is super cheap look at it 125 coins each so you just keep buying that and buying that and you sell so anything in this hub that you sell to is going to also give you economy xp so you can go over here and sell stuff to the baker generally speaking you can sell like grape jam that's really easy to make you just need a cooking table you can turn that out really fast and ultimately you're probably gonna have like 500 you know wheat on your island you're just gonna be constantly harvesting because wheat is super fast to harvest it is ready super fast so that's the great thing about wheat is you know you don't have to wait like five minutes for it but the thing to remember is we do have daily xp right so we got a four times bonus for our daily xp now i am maxed out right now so i'm not gonna i, I can't really show you anything with economy xp but for an example for you know say like uh mining so you can see we got daily bonus here and this is how much daily bonus i have so i can actually i can actually farm 600,000 xp for my mining you can see i'm gonna gain four times xp right so four times bonus this is only 18 because i'm doing like the really bad stuff but um once this bonus is out stop your economy xp grind Unless you are really desperate to get to level 55 for economy, you know, ASAP in the same day, you're going to be up for hours because what's going to happen is you're going to blow through that economy XP and then you're going to actually end up just gaining regular XP on that. So it's four times the effort that you were just doing, right? So if things are going really fast, you're leveling it fast, you're, you know, maybe up to level 25 already for economy XP. But what happens is as soon as you run out of your daily bonus, then you're back to square one and you're going to feel the climb because not only is it four times as hard each level as you go up. And so again, you're, you're going to be in for hours and hours of grinding unless you just keep coming back the next day and the next day and next day just wait for that daily bonus to come back and then go grind again and that's how you can get to level 55 really fast with economy xp um the other thing you can do is you can um, come over to this guy you can sell you know crates to this is a great way to do it you can sell big crates to him i sold a ton of watermelon crates and um that gave me a ton of xp as well i even leveled a couple times all the way up i think i maxed out with that um was just selling watermelon crates i mean level 99 i mean it's crazy but um you know crates are a great way like like I said, wood, you can sell to this guy over here and you can sell wood to him. You can also sell ingots so you can sell iron. You can also come over to Mr. Mechanic over here and you can sell stuff to this guy. See, he'll buy um, copper ingots from you. Not for much though. Look at, I'm selling, that'd be 9,000 copper for only 55,000. Would not be very good. Same for these. I have 483. It would only give me 96, you know, thousand. Same for these though. You know, 92 would give me 2.7 million, but these are so valuable. You don't want to really want to sell these unless you have to. They will give you a ton of economy XP though. And then of course the adventure Ivan here, this is a great way. So if you've been farming, that's why I always tell you, that's why I started with combat is because as a result of leveling up your combat, you're going to end up with a lot of resources that you can sell to this guy to help with your economy XP. That's why we want to start with combat, level up your combat before you work on economy XP, because by the time you're working on economy XP, you probably have a lot of stuff. So you can actually sell all these things. And, um, but yeah, so economy XP is actually quite easy. It just takes a long time, especially if you're trying to do it, you know, in, in a day, like I usually do, it's going to take you several hours. It's going to take you probably about three plus hours okay so it's gonna take a while so next up is you know during the summer cletus will actually have a chance to show up on your island let's see is it summer it is summer so right now cletus is not on my island so if i come to my island i'm only gonna see focal what you do during summer is you know cletus will have a chance it's a rare chance for him to actually arrive on your island when he doesn't arrive on your island you can actually find him inside the published island sometimes they'll put it in the title but um what you could do is you can just kind of bounce around let's see you're just looking for anyone that says cletus or watermelons modern shop cletus right here see 
So let's go visit Cletus. And when you actually talk with them, you can actually buy watermelon seeds or you can sell watermelons to them. So we're going to do that real quick. He's usually near the portal. So let's go over here. Okay, I see Focal. I see Cletus. Okay, so Cletus is over here on this island as promised. So it is in the title. This is the way to do it. So you go to view shop and you can actually buy seeds from Cletus. And this is right here. What I just bought, right? I just spent 6,400. I can actually resell these. No joke. I can resell these for 200,000 a piece. People are so, people want these so badly. I'm going to go and sell these. So we can actually go back over here and I don't know if they're actually buying seeds for this, but um, they're probably going to be buying them for, if, if I can sell them for 200,000, I, you know, on my own Island, at least then they're probably only buying them for like maybe hundred thousand tops. So let's go see if they're buying them. Let's go over here. Yeah. So hundred thousand, I was right. So we can sell this for a hundred thousand each. Check this out. So, you know, obviously I had more seeds than that, but I just made a bunch of money. So that is how to do it. So another thing you could do, especially for, you know, circumstances. So say you're still working on your Island. Maybe you're really early in the game and you're like, DV, there's no way I can't afford to make one of these. So you can see it requires 450 iron for most players. They don't even have that much iron. So if you have like maybe a handful of iron, you're going to be in trouble for this stone brick is a big pain too. Cause you need to have stone cutters and then, but it's not too bad. You can actually make that pretty easily. It just takes a bit of time and then maple wood as well. So maple, you know, obviously maple trees do require a bit. And then on top of that, you know, you're asked to make, you know, an anvil Anvil's only 50 iron, but again, we're going back to the iron. What if you don't have a smelter? You're doing this by hand, right? So how you avoid doing that. So you don't have to actually spend 500 iron on, you know, basically workbenches. Just go to someone's island. And what I'd recommend is start at the very bottom here, just because it's a little easier to navigate their islands. Okay, so here's a great example of someone that actually has a workbench. So you could just use theirs. Now, it doesn't look like they have an anvil around here. I don't really know why. So you're just gonna have to do a little bit of checking around. Oh, it looks like they have Cletus here, but you're gonna have to do a little bit of checking around for it. All right, next up, we're gonna talk a bit about money. How do you make lots and lots of money? What's the fastest way to get rich? This is probably the number one question I get. I didn't really wanna lead off with this, but the number one way to get rich fast in this game, honestly, is this way. So some people are actually, you know, talking about the fact that, okay, I made some watermelon crops and made some really great ways to make tons and tons of coins but that's actually not the fastest way to get rich in this game it's actually through buying and selling on islands shops so even though i had this giant watermelon farm down here that did make us a ton of money i mean i made like i think 100 million it did take a while right so that was a lot of grinding i actually don't have it here anymore because the fastest way i'm going to make coins by selling seeds by buying seeds trade is still the number one way to make a lot of coins very quickly so as much as you could grind all day for farming it is not the fastest way now you do need to actually have published you know so you need to have that pro pass right but if you don't have the pro pass, here's a second way to get rich fast. It's by trading on discords. So not everyone can actually use discord. So I completely understand that. That's why you go back to, well, you got to have the pro pass then. Otherwise, the third way to get rich in this game fast is how I did, you know, that watermelon farm. Slowly grow your farm, do, you know, mega farms like this using seasonal crops. Seasonal crops are the best crop to sell. So, you know, if you're going to be doing a big farm, definitely do that. Um, star fruit seeds pretty good too. So, you know, you can actually do pretty good, you know, star fruit, you know, crops, especially since they don't actually get oily and such. If you have a ton of star fruit, just use that as well. But the reason why I say seasonal is because you can actually buy them very cheaply from him instead of, you know, having to go out to Buffalo Core Island and trying to find star fruit seeds because that takes forever to get. So next, a couple other tips. So first up, how to plow your crops really fast. So I'm going to show you how to plow really fast. So if we got grass over here, hopefully we can beat the sun because the game likes to bully me. No joke. It really does. I basically angle my screen down. So it's like basically flat like this. We get our plow and I just spam it you can also auto click it so you see it's just it's at a, it's at this angle here and so while you're running across you could do that but right here here's a great example say i was actually plowing this i can actually just kind of you know keep my mouse down like this and i can pretty much except for rocks and stuff you could just do this and you can use an auto clicker you can pretty much you know full sprint on doing this format same thing for breaking blocks breaking blocks is so much faster if you just side sideways angle it you know super easy now, the next one is using spawn blocks to get around wherever you want. Spawn blocks are super cheap. You get them from the mechanic in the hub. So a spawn block looks like this and I can use it to get to many, many different places. So typically speaking, you know, you might be coming up here and you're like, dude, I can't get up. I can't get up. I can't get up. Oh, how do I get up here? Say I can't get up here. I can just put up a spawn block right there. Bink. I'm up top now, right? So you can get wherever you want with spawn blocks. You don't have to just put it under stuff. You can actually just, you know, build build it to wherever you want. So say I want to get up to the top of this real quick. There's a couple ways. So you can see my auto farm over there. All right, so see where this is? There's only one block, right? So it's a tower. It's a column that goes all the way to the top. All I got to do is put this block here. And now that space is completely filled, right? So if you see, I'm just going to reset. And now I'm at the top of my farm. Now, alternatively, what if I didn't, you know, have a column like this? How do I get up there? Well, what you could do is you could just do something like this, like I was just doing earlier. You could just do a little jump here, spawn in. And as long as you have a bunch of these, 
you could just pretty much keep going. So if you had a bunch of those, you could just keep climbing wherever you wanted to climb very, very easily. So next let's talk about breaking blocks. So obviously we have, you know, really heavy trees these days. So for example, over here, I'm just gonna show you over here with some of these guys. Okay, just imagine this is an ax, <laughs> but we're gonna use a pickaxe. It'll still work the same way. So you can see if I come over here and use my pickaxe on this tree, it's gonna take so many hits, look it. It takes forever, it takes forever. How you can shortcut that, two ways. First way, very simple. I can just break the block under it, right? So if I break the block, boom, I got my wood, I got my spirit sapling back. Alternatively to this, what if you didn't want to do that for some reason, or maybe you couldn't, maybe you couldn't. Then here's the other way you can do it. You can get a totem, any totem that is basically like stone or iron, basically any of the gray totems, not the crop totems. So let's just do like, um, let's do a coal one. What I would do is I'd put it on a block here so you don't end up with like a bunch of weird ore stacks that you got to go and like clean up or you know harvest or farm. And what we do is we go into the totem and we're going to upgrade it. So go to upgrade and we're going to see right here, it says 4% block hit damage when near. So this actually has really crazy range too, by the way. I think it was like up to like nine or 10 blocks. I can't remember. Let me know in the comments what the range is. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's it's pretty far. I tested, I think I got at least nine blocks. So if you come right here and you just upgrade this as much as you can afford, don't worry, you can, you, you can get all your resources back. So if you break the totem, you're gonna get all this stuff back. So go all the way up as much as you can. I'm already at 200, so I'm maxed out on that right now. So now I take my pickaxe, I'm gonna go up to this tree and I'm gonna smack it, two, three. Four. So only four hits now. If you remember, this one was like 10 hits. Now, if I had an ax, I can just pretty much come up. Where's my totem at? Right here. So I could pretty much just cut this one like this. Now it's one shot. One shot with my diamond ax. Boom, one shot. Look at that range. See how far that reached? That's like 12 blocks away. So really great way to be able to, you know, especially if you're, if you got like a tree farm or something like that, and you want to be able to break these really fast, just put one of these temporarily. And like I said, you know, we can pretty much just take that out afterwards. Boom, I got all my stuff back. So you don't have to worry about that. Now I'm going to show you again without that damage, you know, with this um, diamond ax, how many hits? That's one, two, it's like pretty much three hits. So again, great way to be able to actually, you know, break stuff. But the best way is still gonna be breaking the blocks under it. You can use that for ore as well. So if you have stone, marble, any kind of ore stacks, you could pretty much just break the block under it. And that's the best way to go. So the other thing I wanna talk about is crop totems. So a lot of people don't actually realize these stacks. So yeah, crop totems are really expensive as you just saw, that's very similar. That was not a crop totem, but it was a totem. So I'll just give you an example here. Let me grab a crop totem. And they're all the same, by the way, they're all the same cost. So it doesn't matter which one you pick. You can see that we got utility, efficiency, and quality. So if you wanna be able to have like right here, look at this 1% for nearby crop growth rate. So if we actually bump this up, see how it's 1%. Now I can actually upgrade this and yeah, it's gonna be super costly. I'm not gonna upgrade it all the way. I'm gonna upgrade it to 10. And what I'm gonna do is instead of continuing on where it gets really expensive, right? It starts using special woods, it starts getting gears, it starts getting all kinds of stuff. I'm not gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put another one next to it. And then we're gonna upgrade this one to 10. And you can use any kind of totem, by the way. These will, it doesn't matter what kind of totem you have, it will affect all crops. So if I had uh, potatoes on this side and watermelons on this side and starfruit right here, all of them are affected by these two watermelon totems. It doesn't matter the crop type. A lot of people don't realize that. You don't actually have to do this just for the crop that you're doing. Not to be confused with that these totems will actually auto harvest for you. No, not at all. They, they're not gonna do a thing for other crops other than the ones that are shown here. So if it's a watermelon to totem, only gonna auto harvest watermelon seeds. But if it's radishes, it will still improve the effects of the growth rate based on right here, it says nearby crop growth rate. Again, it's saying nearby crop. It doesn't say nearby watermelon growth rate. It's nearby by anything. So again, this is level 10, so we can put another one here. And these are stacking on top of each other. So I don't actually have to go much more. So what's happening here is we got 18% plus another 18%, so that's 36%, right? So you can total it all up and you get an idea of how much it's actually improving the growth. So, you know, it's still costing stuff. I mean, the totems themselves cost stuff too, but um, that is how these totems work. And a lot of people don't realize this is how they work, but um, it's really, really simple to do. So great way to do it, especially if you can't afford upgrades. Great way to do it is go to the cheap route. So this one's actually really simple. Just grab a shovel. But if you're looking for snow, um, just go back out to the hub. And then right behind the castle currently, as of this video, and sometimes they change locations, but look for the highest mountains. And the highest mountains are gonna have snow on them. So check this out. So if you want snow, you can still get them. So if you want to make snow blocks or anything like that, it's a real easy way to get snow is just come out here and get them from the hub. So next up is a tip that a lot of people don't realize, which is see this watering can as cheap as they are, you can get these right away, but use these to speed up the growth of your crops, especially if you're working on economy XP, just get an auto clicker and spam it or just spam your phone or, or Xbox or whatever, and just water your crops. And you're going to speed them up so much. You can use this for flowers too, obviously, but I use them for my crops, especially like if I'm waiting for watermelons or something. So say I have these spirit seeds, um, I could just get my watering can out, 
boom, boom, boom. And it's infinite. I don't have, I'm not gonna run out. I'm never gonna run out. Of, so get that, that's a very essential tool. So last but not least is update days. Very, very important. Update days are the best time for you to be, you know, grinding the game. So as soon as an update comes out, make sure you jump in. And even if it's for like, you know, the 30 minutes, you know, you, you maybe don't have a whole lot of time to play, at least jump in right away, get the items, get whatever new items there are, and then go sell them. I know that's crazy, right? You're gonna go and grind a bunch of items and you're gonna go sell them. So what you do is you sell them when they're actually the most valuable. Everyone is going for them over, everyone's overpaying for these items. Go for them, get them, sell them. And then what you do is give a couple days then come back and buy them at a discount because they're going to be way cheaper two three days later so definitely you know go that route unless it's a limited item then be careful you know if it's a limited item then don't do that anyway i hope these tips were helpful to you i know they helped me over time so let me know in the comments if you also have any tips of your own thanks so much for watching be sure to like and subscribe remember there's a, probably an update coming out tomorrow the 17th of july so you know hopefully we'll get something pretty cool i'm hearing it's going to be really cool thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time Peace.